Welcome to FB Geeks. Here's the group, Eric, Dan, and Steve. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is Found Japan Geeks podcast episode number 77 for Monday, June 24th, 2013. We are streaming to you live on Saturday, June 22nd. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, geeks the world over, thank you so much for joining us again and welcome to another highly structured and content enriching episode of Fountain Pen Television. My name is Stephen. <laughs> My name is Aziza. And I'm Dan. Well, and Dan is back. I remembered how to do it. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was hoping you'd go first, but then you didn't. Well, I can't really go first. I haven't been on the show in like four weeks. So long. And By the way, it's yesterday. actually for Monday, July 1st. I just forgot to change the date. Sorry, folks. Oh, yeah, and I, I don't really pay attention to what I'm reading. And, so and Steven doesn't pay attention. He'll just no, read anything. I just written. read anything. He just... I mean, well, like Ron Burgundy. <laughs> we, can, we can have fun with that one. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind for the future. That's uh, pretty useful, yeah. Yeah, we let Dan out of his cage, so... It's nice. It's nice to be free. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were definitely missed, so it's very nice to have you here today. Yes. How are you doing? Good to be back. I'm doing really well, very well rested. Um, Arya is the most amazing little girl ever. She's sleeping eight to nine hours a night. Um, Holy smokes. She's yeah. spoiling you. Exactly. That's not bad at all. Um, I'm telling you, if you have a second one, she's going to be rough. Well, see, that's what we're afraid of. We're like, okay, maybe we should just stop at one because she's so perfect. Like, yep. we don't know what we're going to get on the next one. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we fed her this morning, and she was up for a little bit, and then she went back to sleep, and she's going to let Daddy do a show. So awesome. I'm to be here. Awesome. Very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, we're so excited that you're here. Oh. What a treat. <laughs> I tell you, everyone's going to be so excited. Uh, everyone else is excited, too. All right. What have you guys been up to? Oh, just pinning around, playing with pens, tasting ink. Oh, I know. You, know? you guys have the weirdest conversations. <laughs> on yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's absolutely, I, I cannot even deny that. It's, it's, it's true. <laughs> Why? Well, you know, I, I had ink on my finger, and I didn't want it to waste. And I was like, well, I'm not going to waste it by just putting it onto a Kleenex. I'm just going to test it out. You know, and then I was like, oh, that's kind of sweet. And that's all. You know, it's, it was just a very brief moment. Some people eat bugs. Some people taste ink. I'm just dedicated. Anyway, moving along. Because <laughs> you guys are probably terrified. Yep. Not really. No, we, we, we taste ink all the time. Don't worry. Do you have a favorite ink, Aziza? My favorite ink right now is the Visconti. Oh my goodness. Because the second you taste it, it's really, really sweet, and then it just disappears instantly. It's this really, really, really weird. Really I'll, weird I'll be discussion. excited to see the effects after like 10 years or so. I mean, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Someone should be studying this. Like, can we get a grant for that? I mean, I think so. Well, I, we have I, a I psychologist in the house. I don't know if this is, no, it's probably more like physiology or something. Well, I mean, I, I, I think the uh, National Institute of Mental Health is definitely <laughs> interested in this kind of stuff, so we should definitely be able to get something going there. Yeah. Oh, um, boy. You know what? Just, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not trying to curtail this discussion about tasting ink or anything, but maybe we should uh, talk about pen shows a bit or something. Yes, because pen shows is a place where you can go and taste ink. I mean, test ink. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, we do have a pen show coming up. There's Which one was that? in. Uh, it's in July, July 12th to July 14th in Miami. And who doesn't want to go to Miami in the summer, right? You can like go to the beach and you can go to pen shows. Um, it's really, really hot. It is really hot, but then you can get, from humidity. You can go to the beach with your pens. No, you don't want to do that. Get sand in the nibs and like the feet will get clogged. No, it's just a mess. Oh, well, the life of a pen geek, eh? I got sand in my feet again. My so what's feet. going to be happening at the Miami Pen Show? Uh, well, it looks pretty good. Um, on Friday, it's open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. to the public. And then Saturday, it is 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. to the public. And then there's... I, I don't know what the seminar is as yet, but um, from 11 a.m. to 11.45, there's a seminar. And then 12 I heard it's ink tasting. It's eight, no, 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 no. Ink tasting is a seminar. It's an experience. 
it's a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. See this geek that's no. Yeah. So we've mentioned before that Deborah Basil does calligraphy classes, and they're two hours, and they're like twenty-five dollars, and she gives you like materials and stuff, and apparently they're really good. So there is one on Saturday, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. So if you can make it, you should probably go to it. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a bad price at all for a two-hour calligraphy class. Yeah, even if you do get some paper. or I mean, I would go even if I wouldn't get any materials because right. just to get the experience of someone teaching me how to do calligraphy properly, not just you know looking at a paper and trying to copy it, I would do it. So how yeah, much is the end of the show? Uh, one day pass ten dollars, two day pass fifteen, and a three day trader pass is forty five. So that gets you into the extra hours and all that stuff. So nice. Yeah, it's not bad. I would say it's pretty worth it. Cool. And if yeah, you want good. more info, you can go to miamipenshow dot com, and you can like fly out to Miami and have a good time. Anyway, that's all that I've got going on for July that I know of. If anybody has more pen shows that I secretly don't know about, please let me know. And we'll add it to the list. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. So, what's, so what's going on at the website? Is have, Am I missing anything? Well, right now, there's excitement because there's a giveaway. Oh, yeah. That's coming to a close pretty soon, right? Yeah. I think it, it closes tomorrow, I think. Yeah, tomorrow right. night. Yeah. And, so you have time to get your entries in if you have not yet. What you can you win? Crazy. I wanna know. You, oh, it's so cool. You can win a... Oh, look, he's going to steal the show. Is that what you can win? <laughs> you can win Aria. Oh, Ooh. She does not come with accessories. <laughs> you have to provide your own. No, you can't win Aria. But you can win a... It's a three set of Quaggle pens. You can get a ballpoint, rollerball, and fountain pen. And you can pick your color. It's either yellow cab or soap green. Both of which are just really fun colors. One looks like a cab, the other one looks like soap green. I couldn't describe it better than that. And it's sponsored by Fonto Plumo. And these pens haven't been around for like 16 plus years. So Yeah, these are uh, new old stock pens that they found. Um, and I don't know how, but Frank at Fonto Plumo, he somehow got the exclusive on all of them, and so he decided to give some away, and uh, we're glad that he chose to partner with us to do it. So awesome. And it's really easy to enter, so you have no excuses. Exactly. But if you didn't want to enter, like if you didn't want to wait, you can actually go to his website and just buy them straight out. So. Yeah, some of us are really impatient, not me, but... <laughs> <laughs> Some of us don't like to wait, but it's quite cool. I'm still wondering about how this works. Someone in the Kaweco warehouse, warehouse just someday says, "Oh, look, there are some pens here I haven't seen for a while," and then, then they just bring them out. And I, I just think it's it's interesting, just funny that they they suddenly discover that. But it's it's very cool. Yeah, that kind of makes you wonder what's lying around at like Mont Blanc and. Oh, absolutely. Louis we need to, we need to break in. That's what we need to do. Yeah. Well, of course, then that would probably be the end of us. So. Could <laughs> we? We could have a soundtrack for that. Wow, go. that was super geeky. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if it. you haven't entered, go over to fpgeeks.com. It is like the first or second post. Yes, yeah, it'll be the second post at the top. There's multiple ways to enter. Did you explain all that? Um, not yet. Not really. Yeah, it's super geeky. You can just leave a comment. You can follow us and Fonto Plumo on Twitter and on Facebook. So it'll give you five entries total that, that you can get into the contest with. Uh, so it'll give you even better chances for winning. So, you know, if you don't use Facebook or Twitter, now's a good time to start. Plus, then you get to see everybody's awesome pictures and all that stuff. So it's just fun. Yeah, so you should do it. Plus, you might win an awesome set. So head over and enter and maybe win an awesome set. Yay. And maybe not, but then at least it was fun to enter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You can just torture yourself a little, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am a psychologist. <laughs> all right. Shall we move on to the sort of topic? <laughs> yes, let's move on to the sort of structured topic. Well, we uh, thought it was a good idea. It's, a, it's yeah. an interesting topic. Uh, we, we, uh, Aziza and I were, were talking and, and we thought that it might be a good idea to just have a chat about some uh, tools, some of which you, you may have lying around the house, 
uh, which you can use for pen maintenance. Now, um, when, when we say pen maintenance, then we're not really talking about pen repair. So this is not stuff to resack a pen or that kind of thing. We've already had a show on, on pen repair. We may do something about pen repair tools in the future, but today it's really about maintenance. So cleaning a pen, maybe polishing it a bit, that kind of stuff. It is not an exhaustive list because there's always stuff you can add, but this is just what we came up with on the fly. I have a, a nifty little box right next to me with stuff in there, which I'm not going to empty out completely, but at least there's going to be some stuff in there that you, you might find useful. Of course, with any of these tools, uh, I, this should probably be a little bit of a disclaimer. If you use this, then uh, just because we do so, I mean, we're geeks, it doesn't mean that you can do absolutely no damage with them. Uh, so always be careful. We use SENS um, and uh, well, that's pretty much all the steward, I think. Should Talking we say anything about, about that? Storage. Yes. Th th this is what I use to store all my stuff in, and um, I actually did a post on this. You can find it, I think, in I think the repair bench category. Sure, but uh, when you open it up, it's got little pockets for any oh. type that you need. And then down below, it's got a, a bigger storage with with bigger compartments, so you can put you know all your polishing stuff, any little tools or anything you need there. That is handy. Yeah, it's super handy and it's super compact and it, it's really useful. I mean, y you can see how how thick it is, but it holds like everything I need for for my pens. So if I gotta go over to a buddy's house to work on some pens, or if I just need to do repairs here, everything is all in one spot, super easy to find. Where do we get one? Um. You can find them on Amazon. I think they're like 15 bucks or something. And I, I know it's in that repair bench post. Um, yeah, yeah. Talking about. But, uh, yeah, I'll have to find that link and we'll definitely put it in the show notes. Um, Sounds cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I, I use something uh, not as nifty as that. It's just a, a small uh, tool box, I suppose, uh, which which keeps most of the stuff I need. Um, but I, I like the, the thing that you have a lot of dividers and, and small spaces that's very useful. For, a lot of this stuff is quite small, right? So it's, it's nice if you don't have that flying all through your storage uh, system. Right. Nice. All right. Um, well, let's start with something that is maybe not entirely obvious but that I, I, I think has quite a couple of applications. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm happy Dan is here because I'm not, you do a lot of pen repair. I'm not sure whether you always use this. But at some point, I started to use it. We're talking about talcum powder. Mm -hmm. You never use talcum powder? All the time when I'm resacking a pen. Exactly. Can you explain the exact uh, the, uh, reason to do that? Because I had the idea it had something to do with absorbing liquids, but I thought there was another reason too, and I cannot remember it. It, yeah, it keeps it helps keep it dry on the inside, but it also acts as kind of a dry lubricant when you when you're putting the pen back together. It just helps the pen or the sack slide in against the barrel, and it's especially useful when for when you do vacuumatic repairs, which is what I do almost exclusively, um, because you, you need to coat the outside of the sack because what the sack does is it, it flips over on itself and it rubs against each other so it just acts as a dry lubricant and, and you know keeps moisture away and yeah it's it's definitely a necessity for any kind of pin repair with sacks um, so I actually uh, that may not be so much a maintenance thing but I, I, I do actually when I sometimes I, I do disassemble a pen without resecting it and then I just apply a little bit more talcum powder if it's necessary. Um, so I guess we could sort of sell this as a, a maintenance thing. Um, one thing that is important uh, to, to bear in mind is that you cannot use any talcum powder. It should be pure talcum powder and not stuck with perfume in there or something because that could actually deteriorate the, the sack of the pen. Exactly. So be careful about that. All right. Um, then we, ha we have something that I uh, uh, is a bit sort of a medical thing. Um, I'm digging around for that. Um, here we go. So these are alligator forceps. Dan has them too. Oh yeah. But yours open up. Yours are bigger than mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. It's oh boy. You do. Move it. Like Carry on, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just do that? Show yours again, though, because yours just opened at the very end, right? Yes. So the, oh, yeah, those are definitely different forceps. Yeah, th those yeah. Are, have the advantage of being able to go down into a barrel, um, exactly. mag something out. Um, 
these work well, but but it, they're limited. And um, I just got these because my my wife works at a vet clinic, and they were they were tossing them, so they were free. But um, uh, can, can you I, actually can you lock those that you have? Because it looked yes. like there was a yeah exactly. So there's actually clamps to to shut yeah, down veins or at something. At the end here, yeah, they can lock, so you can't mm. pull it. Yeah, very useful. But I, I do like yours. I need to get a set of the style that you have. Yeah, what, what I like about this, maybe it's good to give a short description for people who only have audio, um, uh, so that they can sort of enjoy the, the general structure here. Um, the, uh, the the good thing about this is that it's it's a very long. It's a bit like a pair of scissors, uh, but you 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 have this this sort of elongated thing going on. Uh, you can stick it in a pen barrel, and then you have just forceps, so you can open it up. But it's just a very tip of it that actually opens up. So unlike, for example, tweezers or, or uh, pliers that you could stick in, but then cannot really open inside a pen barrel because then the, the whole sort of shearing motion doesn't work. Right. With these forceps, you can just stick them all the way into your barrel and pick something up. But sometimes it happens. I, uh, this is not really to apply force to anything. Um, because then they will break. It's fairly delicate stuff, um, but you can at least pick stuff out. And I've, I've sometimes you you have stuff where you have a, a rubber sack that's disintegrated, for example, and bits have gotten into the barrel. They're hard to get out. Well, then this is really useful because you can just stick it all the way in. It opens up. You grab something and you pull it back out. So I I think it's a very useful thing, um, and this kind of stuff really isn't something, I mean, clearly if you're buying medical grade, super high quality stuff, it's going to be expensive, but you can pick these up from a lot of sources, for example, on eBay, for just a couple of dollars, and you're really not spending a lot of money. It's possible that someone was killed with them, but, you know, at least uh, uh, they, they, they shouldn't be uh, too expensive. Just a minor detail. Um, all right. Uh, then we have something that everyone should have, and I'm sure that you all do. Uh, silicon grease, clear oh, yeah. silicon grease. This is useful for even so I have many that, things. And I don't know how to even do you. I mean, if Ziza has it, then it has to be a very basic, <laughs> exactly, very thing, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, you can you can get this from a lot of sources. Uh, you, you you don't have to buy this from a pen supplier. You can also go to your local do it yourself store. So what do you do with this? Do you, do you stick your nib in it before you write, or yeah? So so what you do is if you if you take a look at the underside of your your feet and you see all those little fins, you cram them full of this stuff, and then you know you absolutely ruined your pen. So uh, one okay, people really don't do that. Yeah, no, yeah. This is something that should only be used as, say, either a lubricant on the inside of a, a piston or on the inside of a converter, for example. Um, but you can also use it if you're converting a pen to an eyedropper. You put this on the inside of the, the barrel threads or on the, the threads in the section, um, and you maybe add a rubber O-ring or something, but sometimes this is just enough. And it's just a sort of barrier against ink. So it will, it will make sure that your ink doesn't actually seep through the section. And I, I use it as a lubricant for a lot of stuff. That sounds a bit weird, but I, I mean, a lot of pen-related things, you can use this as a lubricant and it works just fine. How about that? Right, yeah. It's, yeah, it's perfect for um, converting pins to eyedroppers because some won't have an O-ring to create a perfect seal. And, and even if some pins do have O-rings, they still recommend putting this on the threads just because it, you know, it keeps everything sealed. It'll prevent link from ink from eventually leaking down through those threads and, and, and getting onto the section onto your fingers. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, I think something that everyone should have just, just because, um, so many pens have the potential to be turned into an eyedropper. I mean, mm -hmm. you can go from a, a one milliliter converter to the entire pen barrel that some will hold up words of, of six milliliters, you know? Mm -hmm. So, Plus, it lasts a long time. You don't. Oh, yeah. You can use it like fairly sparingly. Like you don't need to like glop it on. Absolutely. So, and so it's worth it. The the next item I think, which is probably just as useful, is brass shims, and a number of um, nib repairers, nib meisters, you know, they'll recommend you use these just for cleaning out the the slit in the nib. Um, you know, sometimes depending on what kind of paper you use, it'll be a little fibrous and, and your nib can pick up fibers. Um, it can impede the flow of the ink. Um, and sometimes it, it just, it'll stop the flow altogether. So just running a, a brass shim from the breather hole down to the tip, it'll clear that stuff out. It, it might, you know, bring back your flow. And if you're doing any kind of nib work, it, it's really important to have those brass shims. And I mean, super cheap too. You can pick them up for, you know, a couple of dollars already cut from, you know, a specific pen outlet, or you could just go buy an entire brass sheet for a buck and, and you know, make your own that way. But uh, very, very useful. Maybe it's good to say something, because I'm sure that we're going to get questions about this. Uh, what, I, what I mainly use is 0.002 inch 
uh, uh, yes. shims and 0.01 inch. The 0.01 inch is obviously thinner. That is, and the, the difference is really noticeable. I got some of the stuff here. Of course, I got these little Ziploc bags, which I should have opened up in advance because you now I'm fiddling around. But, um, so this is 0.001 inch, and this is really flimsy and, and thin. So that is good for flossing a nib, and that's what I, I mainly use it for. And then you have the 0.002 inch. If you hear weird noises in the background, that's my bird. Um, the bird is called Lecter because he bit off the legs of other birds in another cage. Not with me, but with where, where we got it. Um, so that was just a little story to fill the space. This is 0.002 inch, uh, two thousandth of an inch. Uh, and this is already quite a bit thicker. Um, it's, it's not as flimsy as the other one. Uh, you can use this to, to floss nibs too. And I, I generally use these to open up the, the uh, gap, so the, the slip in a nib a little bit to make it a bit wetter. Um, and one tip if you have trouble finding this stuff, because for me it was it was a bit of an issue. Um, if you go online and you search for K and S, so the letter K and then ampersand S, uh, uh, they, they make railroad supplies, so for your model trains, and they sell a, a package that has 0 .01, 002, 003, and 005 inch uh, just sheets rectangular sheets which you can cut to size yourself. You don't need special tools, it's not that hard. Um, and that's a, a fairly cheap way to get it and you can cut a bunch of shims from just one of those sheets. So it's, yeah. uh, it, it's, it's a, a nice way to get it. Yeah, very useful. And um, another very useful tool, um, slightly a little bit more expensive, but this also depends on where you get it, is an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, now you can spend upwards of a couple hundred bucks on high-end ultrasonic cleaners, but I got mine at um, Bed Bath & Beyond, just you know, a big department store. It was on clearance. I think we paid like eight dollars for it. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, super awesome. It's, nice. it's, got, it's, got, good deal. it's got two compartments two trays and they're actually removable. You, you can lift them up out, um, there's two speeds and all you do, you can fill it with water or it, you know you, you can put a little bit of ammonia and water in there and then just let the the nibs or the, the pen or just whatever sit in there um, but you do want to be careful. I mean if you have like a, a ebonite pen or a hard rubber pen you don't want to just let it sit in there for too long. You, you want to try just to um, keep the nib in there so don't fill it all the way up. Um, but usually, you know, modern plastics, they'll be able to sit in the water or, or the water ammonia mixture for several hours. And then basically the ultrasonic cleaner just kind of shakes the pen clean. I mean, it, it'll, it'll loosen up any ink that's dried in the feed on the inside. I mean, they do a really good job. I mean, especially for, you know, how little maintenance it is. You just stick your pins in there and let it do its thing. So. Seems yeah, I, I, I recently got one, and I, I didn't have one, and then we had that show with the Andersons where we talked about pen repair, and I, I was always a little skeptical, and I thought, well, you know, it's probably not going to do a whole lot, but I, I've had one now, and I'm, I'm just looking around to see what else I can put in there. It's a lot of fun to just Jewelry. see how, how clean stuff gets. It's really weird, but and it, 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 I, I fully agree with Dan. It's super useful stuff, and I, mine wasn't that expensive either, I just went to a local um, uh, optometrician, I suppose, where you get your glasses, and they sold them for people cleaning lenses and stuff, uh, and it's, um, it, it wasn't even that expensive, and it's super useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you check on eBay, I mean, we got ours from eBay, and I think it was like 20 bucks shipped, and it's nice. fantastic. So, and it's, it's like, I mean, it's, like, it's, it's a fairly small one. Like right. one of those big ones, but I use it for everything. I just ladies, you can put your diamonds in there, and they will sparkle like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Just say, yeah, so like it's brand new. So. I, I always put my diamonds in. It. Oh yeah, and and boys with bling, just just in case, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> because um, even likes to bling out apparently. So I got a question about the next item. This, this yes. Crochet <laughs> needle. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I can't wait to hear this explanation. Well, I just love to crochet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I would, but I gave it a shot, and I just loved it. No, I, I, I don't even know how to do it, but um, strangely enough, I found that almost everyone has this lying around in their house, which is disturbing and strange. Maybe the crochet needles are trying to take over the world, but in any case, this, for those of you uh, unfortunate souls... That is not a hilarious familiar, screenshot of him. <laughs> this is a crochet needle, 
and if I try to make this focus up close, you see it's just a bit of metal with a very small hook at the end. And that's a very useful tool because, first of all, they are very thin. So you can even slide the first bit of this into a converter, for example. Unfortunately, then they get wider, but usually you can get it in quite a bit. So sometimes, a couple of times, I, I have had issues where um, I, uh, I, I, I try to, to uh, roll up a tissue and put it in a converter to, 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 clean, to dry it out. And then a little bit of paper was left, and that, that's really annoying. Often you can disassemble the converter, but sometimes they're just glued in place, or, or they're sort of well, for example, a Waterman converter, you've never been able to, to take those apart without breaking one. So for me, that was very annoying. I thought of this, I had it lying around. It's a small hook, you stick it in there, and you draw stuff out. And if that doesn't work, I mean, you, you can find other applications, like scraping or, or uh, scraping off all bits of a sack or whatever. Um, but if that doesn't work, you don't happen to have one, there was always the MacGyver survival tool, aka a paperclip, uh, uh, which you can um, uh, you can bend and get in there. This just a, this sounds very obvious, but it actually took me a while to realize that I could just bend a paperclip and stick it in things. So it's it's a very useful little tool. Which this definitely everyone will have this lying around, and it has so many applications. It's just sick. Hi. And the next one um, is almost essential. Um, Grippy material. I, I, I love that name. Grippy material. Good job. <laughs> I think that's Ziza. I think Ziza came up oh, with grippy it? material. It was. So yeah. what we're talking about is just like um, that, that sheeting that you use on like kitchen shelves. That's where you can normally find this stuff, is it like in the, the kitchen department or whatever. Um, but it's just I, grippy material. I mean, that's exactly what it is. I cut it into to little strips and I use it to, you know, just get a better grip on the pen for whatever I need to do. If you need to remove the barrel from the section and um, the, the section is a little slick, you know, just use that and get a perfect grip on it and twist right off. It's, it's super helpful. I actually have this stuff just for the record. So if I, again, if I have it, you should have it. So, so far you have silicon grease, grippy material, and an ultrasonic cleaner. That's right. But the so ultrasonic you're a, a pen repair guru. We're talking yeah. about guru yeah. level. Cool. Yeah. That's nice. right. So the next one is uh, Renaissance wax. And uh, what can you do with this? Renaissance wax is something that was recommended to me by a YouTube viewer. Um, I'm still in my experimental phase, but this is what it looks like. It's just a, a can that is tin. Um, of, of this stuff. Um, it's, it's quite big, this is 200 milliliters, and when you buy it, it, it is crammed full of the stuff. Um, and I think it's nice to just, it's just a few lines, but to just, uh, let me see, is that, uh, yeah, just the history, it says, refined waxes blended to a formula used by the British Museum and Restoration Specialists internationally to revive and protect valuable furniture, leather, paintings, metals, marble, ivory, Etc. Well, that pretty much covers everything in the world, so that's good. Etc. Freshens colors, imparts a soft sheen, um, and how it's 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 odd stuff. Uh, when you open it up, it really smells like paraffin, very strongly. Um, paraffin. I don't know how you pronounce it. It's probably paraffin, right? Um, it is a micro crystalline wax, crystalline wax polish, and you put it on your pen. Um, so I, uh, it's something that will not necessarily give it a, a, a sheen, at least not in my experience. It can do that. I think Aziza and I tried this out when we were chatting with a, a, a hard rubber, black, fairly cheap hard rubber pen, and that gave it a bit of a sheen, but mainly this is protection. So it, it gives you a, a thin protective film on your pen that should stop or at least make sure you don't scratch it very easily. As I said, I'm in my experimental phase. What you do is very simple. You take a lint-free cloth, you put a little bit of that um, on, uh, a little bit of the wax on the cloth, and you gently put that on the pen, you, you buff it a little, uh, and then you, you should be uh, uh, fine, and your, your pen should be protected. And it, it seems to work. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm experimenting, but so far I'm, I'm quite positive about this stuff. And you can just buy it online, you can get much larger uh, containers of the stuff, but I thought this would be a good point to start. And so far, I've been using it quite a bit, and I have used up maybe a micron of the top layer, so I think this is going to last me a while. You can always, like, share with a friend if you have a pen friend. 
or rub it all over your friend. <laughs> oh, <laughs> moving on. Well, you could <laughs> do Jeweler's that, claw. but yeah, jeweler's claw. Uh, this also, is kind of in the same category. Um, a little slightly polishing and bringing back the luster of things. Um, jeweler's cloth will usually have some kind of buffing compound embedded into them. Um, yeah, so ex exactly what Stephen has. Stephen, since you have one, why don't you go ahead and tell us about it? Yeah, this is something I got this. This is from Yardalet. I got this with my Yardalet pen. Um, it has it has two layers, so there is a, a sort of inner layer, and I, I Dan is when Dan was saying it has a sort of buffing stuff in there. Um, I happen to have a pen here, so I'll, as I talk, I try to do before and after things. So you got some some gold stuff there. First, you use the inner layer, um, and when you have done that, you really don't have to do this for half an hour or something. I, I find it, it it is very fast in doing so. Once you've done that, you take the outer layer and you give your pen a nice little bit of a rub there. Um, it sounds very wrong, but I'll, you know what I mean. Um, and then you you take this, and then uh, I'll see if I can make this focus. Uh, you, you see that the clip is really nice, sparkly, showy, shiny, glowy, and that'll run. Uh, and it's it's nice because it, it just looks good. So this is purely a cosmetic thing to make gold or silver surfaces of your pen just make make them shine a bit. And I, I what I use that for apart from that specific purpose of just grabbing a pen after using it, just doing this a bit, sometimes when I get a vintage pen that I need to restore, I clean the nib well, then I give it a final polish with this, and then you, you can really go from a fairly dull old gold nib to a shiny nib that looks like it's fresh from the factory. Dan, do you ever use those? Right, yeah. I've, I, I don't use them personally, um, but I know a lot of people that, that do use them. Um, I, I would caution against using it as just a general cleaning like every time you want to wipe down your pen because um, they do have very, very slight abrasives in them, and so if you use it Every single time you wipe down your pen, it, it might begin to wear some of that plating off. Usually, um, pen repairs will use this just to bring back that luster of an old pen, you know, because the the metal it'll oxidize, you know, you know, so it'll remove that and bring it back. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a very good point. Yeah, thanks. So I yeah. use a microfiber cloth just to wipe down my pens because there there's go. nothing in them and they're like really easy to clean and stuff, and they just like remove they move like fingerprints really well. Yes. So they're yes, very good. good yeah. So look at me contributing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you contributing uh, yeah. more Actually, the, sub, uh, um, the chat helped me out with that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I do actually use those. I just never thought of it. Very nice. Yeah. Woo! I'm so good. Anyway, moving on. Um. To so so we talked about using grippy material. All right. He's frozen. So real earlier. Uh, You're then fast. you can always grab section pliers, and these are special pliers um, that have a, a rounded grip to them, so that they can grip the section a lot better. I think um, Stephen has some. There we go. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Stephen has them. Stephen has everything. <laughs> I know, and it's all within arm's length. Even though I'm not actually in my local space, how about that? I mean, isn't that how prepared you are? So, Stephen, can you stick a, a pin in there to kind of show how it works? Yeah, so I think the best way to use them, first of all, be careful, because even though this is covered, you can absolutely crack a pen with this. It is not just a sort of divine solution that will make sure that you will, you will not damage a pen in any way, so be careful. What I like about these is that they sort of shut by themselves, so you, you, you can sort of grab, put a pen in there, Doing that one hand at least interesting, and then even if I hold just one end, it will stay in there. So it, it kind of shuts. And then I have another one because it's. I think it's it's best to use two of them. Although you could also take some grippy material, put that in the other end, for example the barrel, and then just unscrew it. If that doesn't work, you can take a second one uh, and sort of go in a you know counterclockwise uh, direction with the two of them, and then you should be able to just very easily unscrew your barrel. So that, that's what you use them for. And so this probably won't be used a whole lot for for new pens, for modern pens. Um, this would be extremely helpful for me with, with vintage pen repairs because usually I just use the, the gripping material. But um, sometimes those old pens, man, the sections and barrels are stuck very well or, or sometimes there will be an idiot who actually glues them together. And that's even more frustrating. So, yeah, these, these things will help out a lot. 
um, if you want to get into pin repair at all? Maybe maybe one item that we could add, because I, I don't think we put that in the show notes, um, but that is it's also a sort of plier type of thing. Uh, these are nylon covered pliers, yes. um, which, which are nice to, to grip stuff that you don't actually want to scratch. Now, again, the same warning applies. Not only can you exert more force than you can with your hands, but even though it is nylon covered, you can definitely scratch stuff with this. It's just a bit harder, so you, you, can, you can do some stuff and that that would be more difficult to do, which is you know your leatherman, for example. Right. And then um, something else that's very useful is a, a flexible flashlight. Uh, you know, I always enjoy flash flashlights that are a little bit flexible, and you know can turn into like a, a paintbrush or a coat hanger. You know, I'm glad that they can do multiple roles. That's, that's, that's very that's, very useful. That's what we are talking about, right? Flexible. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that's what I use this for. For example, I have this one. And what you can do, oh. it, has, it has this little thing, uh, this clip, which you can sort of put on there. And then what you can do is you can clip this from your, uh, your, your wall, and then you bend this, and you put your coat on that. So then you have a, a coat hanger uh, thing. It's a flexible flesh. Now, actually, of course, what we're talking about is that this, this uh, has a light. The light is bright, and you can uh, bend it. So you can easily bend it to look into your pen barrel to see if there's something stuck there or a section, if, there's, if that's possible. Um, and and that's, uh, it's, it's pretty useful a bit of kit to have lying around for those purposes. Uh, yeah, I really like them because I will use them to peer inside the caps to see if there's any ink that, that comes out of the, the nib or the feed, you know, and it gets splashed in the cap because, I don't know, I'm so anal about my pens that I can't stand having dry ink on the inside of the cap. It just... That is so funny. Even though I can't see it, I know it's there, and so I have to clean it. But. Oh my god! It's like a stain in your soul. Oh no, man, that's it's terrible. That is so yeah, funny. Actually, I know, I know what you're, I know what you're talking about, and that's that's an excellent application. I, I don't, if it makes you feel better, actually, I use it for that too. <laughs> okay, good. And oh. so I'm, I'm curious, what you use the tweezers for? Um. Yes. Yeah, so I, I got a couple of them. Um, I have these, uh, which are fairly standard tweezers. Um, you can, I, I always find purposes for them, maybe trying to pick something out of a barrel. Uh, I, I'm talking about picking stuff out of barrels a lot. That sounds like I do that every day. That's not really the case, but sometimes stuff happens and can be useful. What's also something that I've, I've, I've found useful in, in this regard is that Sometimes I take apart a converter and there is a little ball bearing in there and I cannot pick up the little ball with my fingers. Now, it's not that I'm that notoriously um, impaired, but it, it's just that sometimes it's, it's slippery, it's, it's hard to do that. If you want to pick something up like that, you can use your tweezers, pick it up, put it back in there. And I have another pair which I particularly like, uh, which has these bent, uh, sort of bent, so that, that makes it easy to, to put stuff in there. These can also be used as a sack spreader if you are uh, putting a new sack on a pen and just put it on there. I don't use, usually I can do it with my fingers, but sometimes you get a weird section, it's a little hard to do that. You can put it on there, gently open it, you don't want to tear the sack, and then you can sort of slide, because it's at an angle, you can just sort of slide it onto the, the section. That's something that could be used. Right. Um, dental picks. I've, I've got a couple of these. I find these extremely useful. For cleaning out, you know, old pens, um, busted sacks. Oh, oh, that type of dental. See, I've got like the, the metal. Yeah, I know. This is like well, this is like a toothpick. I know what you're yes. talking about. Yes. You know, like this, this sort of. There you go. Yes. So for for scraping out old sacks, um, junk like that, um, these things are incredibly useful, um, and you, you should be able to pick these up online on eBay just for a few dollars, just just yeah. like the. Um, four steps we talked about earlier, but um, yeah, definitely um, a tool to have. Mine are made in Pakistan. I thought I'd just mention that uh, because yes. I, I don't think I own a single product that is made in Pakistan, um, and and this is this is made in Pakistan. So I just thought I'd point that. Go on. And then a tube brush. So Stephen, do you have a tube brush on hand? Uh, I happen to have a tube brush, brush tube tube brush on hand. Um, in fact, I have two kinds on hand. These are with a, uh, again, tube brush. If that is not an actual word, then Aziza made it up. It's her fault. She, she, it I'm is, because in the that. lab, when we would buy them, they were called, like, tube brush cleaners. <laughs> but wasn't that actually toothbrush mispronounced by someone? 
because that can well, be that's vulnerable. possible too. It's anyway. What, what I, I I like I like these things. Uh, they have a little round thing going on at the end, which means you can put them on your little finger, and that gives you a nice grip. For some reason, I enjoy that. Um, I have two kinds. This is the um, uh, nylon hair version. And these are pretty stiff nylon hairs. What I like to do with this, if there is encrusted old ink in the inside of a cap or on the inside of a barrel of a vintage pen, I gently put this in there. Uh, I got a couple of sizes of them, so this is obviously bigger, um, depending on the, the, the um, diameter of the, the, the barrel, obviously. Um, so that you can use for, for that kind of stuff, uh, or maybe just brush off the last bits of a, a rubber sack that you need to take out. Uh, and then there is there are these ones. This is very small. I've got a bigger one here, so it's easier to see. Uh, this, I, I think, is actually, I don't know, brass wire or copper wire or whatever uh, um, uh, it is. So this is actually metal. And this is something that will definitely make scratches. But if you really have something tough going on that you need to get off of something, I find it very useful to scrape it clean. But as I said, this will scratch things, so be careful. It is metal. Yeah, they're. I find them really useful. Um, I I actually use them to clean feeds, instead of like you know. I mean, you could use the old toothbrush too, but um, I like the extra stiff bristles of these things, um, and then also clean out the section where the feed was in. Um, that's pretty much how I use them. But yeah, super useful, super cheap. Definitely got to recommend those. Um, and then of course the the nail buff sticks. Um, yep, perfect, just right there for you know. Buffing, polishing your nibs, um, excellent for, for nib work, just kind of smoothing them out, polishing them up, um, hard to go wrong there. Stephen, is and there? They, the, the, the nice thing is that uh, these these have three types of, or, or what should I put it, three grits on there, so you got a, a fairly rough uh, grit, then something that's a bit smooth and something that's super smooth. I mainly use the super smooth uh, side, which is also the biggest that, that helps. Um, very versatile, very nice. If you've got a little bit of a scratchy nib, then that's it's nice to, to clean that out or, or sort that out, I should say. Um, but um, uh, indeed, I, I, I'm still to use this on because I think a lot of people, as you just said, use this to, to uh, sort of pure scratches, right, on barrels and sort of stuff. I've never done that. But do you find um, yourself doing that a lot? If I'm going to polish out scratches, um, I have a, a micro mesh kit that I use um, that gets very, very, very fine. And then I move on to a novice plastic polish. And a after that, it, it, the, the pen is so polished, it, it looks like it's wet. I mean, it's just, it has such a, a super sheen to it that it's, it's awesome. So. Let's try that out. Sounds good. All right. Cool. So the, the next one I was a little curious about, um, fine yeah. copper wire. Yes, and that is one of the few things I don't have lying around here, um, fortunately, and otherwise it would be a little bit uh, What you can do with really fine copper wire, this is something I didn't present or anything. I think I got this from Frank Dubiel's uh, pen repair book. And yeah. um, what you can do is you take this really... Uh, high gauge, very thin uh, copper wire, and you can you can unscrew your your section or take it out, uh, whatever, pull it out, and you, you go in from the back, so it, it cannot have a sack on there if there's some if there's some type of construction like that. And you just slide it through the um, uh, the ink channel, uh, so it has to be really fine copper wire, otherwise that wouldn't work. And then you can sort of, if you cannot remove the nib and feed, sometimes that happens, um, then you can sort of push out any obstructions, paper fiber, encrusted ink, etc. And I thought that was a pretty brilliant uh, suggestion, actually, because yeah. that's the only way you can get through if you really cannot open up your, you know, or, or get out your nib and feed from the section. Right, yeah, very useful, um, especially, you know, if you're buying um, vintage pins on eBay, um, and you don't have the necessary tools to actually take them all apart, that, that's a good way just to quickly clean out the feed and then at least get the pen working again. Um, but yeah, something like that combined with an ultrasonic cleaner would work perfect. Yeah, that's, um, indeed, that's a good, a good combination. Yeah. Um, and then the last item I find so useful, I think everyone has to have I one. have one. I was just going <laughs> to ask you, Aziz. If you I have, have two. No, three. You have why three you have different three? kinds. Bulb syringe. Why do you have three? Why, you know, like when you buy the pack from like, the drugstore for the, the baby 
nasal aspirators. It comes with the long tip and then the one with the little plastic tip. And then I have one from a popsicle maker set. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually fits the best. So um, but yeah, the the one I have, um, the bulb syringe, it fits like every section perfectly. It ex looks almost exactly like that, Stephen. Um, Except it probably has a longer. Um, slightly, a little bit, yeah. Okay. And I use this just for quickly cleaning out feeds after I've inked them, um, because trying to do it with. Order. Oh my gosh, it takes so long. You just fill the bulb syringe once, stick it on the section, and just shoot it through the, the nib and the feed, and it cleans it in seconds. Um, so quickly, yes, exactly. And this is, uh, so this this actually has a, um, um, th this used to be longer, this, this blue plastic thing, or whatever it is, rubber-like material, um, and I, I, I cut it off. And then you can either stick it into the section, or you can stick the section into the bulb syringe, if that makes sense. So by cutting it off, the hole got bigger. It also got a little uh, less elongated. Um, and most sections fit in there. Um, and it's going to wear down at some point. That's obvious. But, I mean, you fill this up. Also, I find it easy to fill it up with water. You just hold this under a tap, and it's, it's full. Um, and uh, you just put it in there. You squeeze a lot of water blue and it's it's clean in, in seconds instead of I mean sometimes it can really take you hours if you're just going through with a, a cartridge or a, a converter and you've been using a really saturated ink this is just much much easier and then one one thing I'll add to that list is a syringe with with a, a plastic tip like these these things are so useful um, I use these to clean out converters really quickly instead of you know twisting and turning you know and doing all that I just shoot one of these with some water in there it cleans them out um, same thing for refilling cartridges um, because for like say um, the pilot vanishing points I prefer to use the cartridges instead of the converter because they hold more ink so I just refill those cartridges with whatever ink I want um, and you know also like pr proprietary cartridge systems like on Schaefer's or um, platinum pens where they have their own cartridge con fittings. Um, I'll just refill those instead of buying a bunch of different ones and then you can use whatever bottled ink you want. Um, and also you know th these work really well for cleaning out the flushing out the inside of pen barrels, um, pen caps, just g getting ink out of little sample containers and, and filling up pens. So Aziza what so do you... Funny. I'm just laughing because you're, you're side of the, your the thing where you're like, I have to clean every part of the pen is coming oh, through, and it's just yes. funny. But, well, but yeah. I do agree with you, especially with those pilot uh, cartridges where it has that little stopper yeah. in it, and you got to get your the little needle past that stopper. Anyway, yep. yeah, I agree. I have one of those, and it's very... I have several of those, actually, and they're very useful. But th this Are you talking about that stopper? Are you talking about the sort of little plastic disc? Yeah, I keep it in there because the ball is in there too. Yeah. And I don't want to lose. I don't know if I need it. I assume I need it because the well, ball is in there. Well, the, the, here is my. Now I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take revenge on Dan. This is where a crochet needle is super useful because that little stopper thing, the plastic disc. You just jam this in there. You you put that hook behind it. You pull it out, and it works just fine. But you're I've supposed that to many keep times. that in there because those little balls in the cartridge keeps the ink flow steady. Yeah, no, no, no. The, the ball, no, the ball is fine. I leave the ball in. But there is, I, I've had. I think it but was. If, if you turn the cartridge over, the ball's gonna fall out. That little plastic disc that's like angled that that'll keep the ball in there. I'm not sure. I had this. Maybe it was it was another brand. I, I know that I, I took out the plastic disc, and the ball was still in there. What was it? Was it was it piled well? I'll, I'm going to look into this and I'm going to show you that the ball doesn't fall out. <laughs> okay, I want to see your video. Cool. Yeah, It'll me too. I'm curious. So, um, uh, so one one thing that I, I I could add to, which is uh, going a little bit into the repair uh, stuff, but I think it, it could still be useful for for maintenance, is a set of, of jeweler screwdrivers. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, these these, of course, they are very useful for repair, but just recently, I had someone who uh, 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 grabbed one of my Mont Blancs, actually, and, and was starting to fiddle around with the uh, little uh, top on... on uh, so you use the screwdriver on. to stab them? Yes. <laughs> okay. And after that, I used it to screw it back in place, because there's a screw inside. You can, you can twist off that little 
end cap thing on top of the cap, but you cannot just put it back on there because the screw is getting loose and it would fall out at some point. And you have to have something that is long and thin that you can put in there, and a regular screwdriver may be too thick. So these things are super useful for that. Um, what, one last thing I'll add. Um, if you like to experiment a lot with ebonite feeds, especially on noodler's pins, you'll want a heat source. And personally, um, I like to use a Zippo because they will stay lit for a long time. You can just set them right there on the table, and um, they're, they're just cool too. But um, if you don't want to use like an open flame, um, you can get – they actually make just kind of like hair dryers, but they're, they're more concentrated. <laughs> they're, I guess that's not the right word. They're smaller, and you can control <laughs> right. the heat a lot better on them. Um, so you don't melt anything, but um, yeah, very useful for just heating up the ebonite feeds, um, reshaping them to fit the nib. And if you watched Nathan's last video, he actually puts dip pin nibs into the feed, and so he has to heat the feed and then reshape it to the nib, and they work perfect. So they can be very, very useful. But yeah. Just some way to apply heat, controlled heat to the feed. Right. Cool. So I think that's a lot of stuff that you can get. Uh, some of these things um, you, you may have to get from, from specialized pen repair resources. But for example, these, these section pliers, um, I got these from Richard Binder's site, and he explains what these are. I think they're used to uh, grab the, uh, the bougies of a car or something. It's, it's actually a, a car maintenance tool, not a pen maintenance tool, but you ha it happens to be the case that it just fits around a pen section very well. So some of this stuff, you just have to be creative. You can get it a lot of other places. So, right. just saying. So I'm really excited to move on to the next section. Me too, because it was me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I have issues today. Just so today. this is actually today? hopefully going to be a, a re recurring section. Um, everyone, welcome to Aziza's Paper Cut. And that's the noise of a paper cut, and then I'm supposed to cry because <laughs> it's like pain and then blood. Uh, and then, okay, maybe we'll awesome. maybe we'll leave that part out. But today's paper cut is the Twisby notebook. Woo! This is the large size. If you are not watching and you cannot see me holding it up, so this is in but comparison to my head. You think I have a big head? No, no, no. The notebook is big. So rude. Here it is in comparison to a field note, so I don't know if that really gives any scale. But um, And I also have on hand um, the medium, which is still in package for a reason that I may or may not tell you. All right, and then... You have the small one too, right? And then I got the small. Let me just line them all up here. There we go. There we go. Yay! So, actually, I'll go ahead and tell them since, um, you know, people are watching the show. I think they should be a little privileged, you know. Yeah. We are going to give the small one and the medium one away. Yay! Um, we're going to do another contest, and um, it'll probably start sometime next week. Um, but, yeah, we're going to give them away. You'll have a chance to win those. Um, excellent paper. I've actually got a large one. Um, Aziza, what, you reviewed it this week. Kind of give us a little synopsis, some pros and cons maybe. Yeah, okay. I was pretty surprised. I... Honestly, was kind of expecting something a little bit better than a moleskin or moleskina or whoever you want to say it. Um, but I'm just blown away by them. So I did a bunch of writing samples in them. I don't know if you can actually see them, but I will just show you in case you're watching and you want to see. I mean, all these pictures are on the website, but I just basically wrote and wrote, tested a whole bunch of fountain pens. I did not bother with gel pens in this because. If you're watching this, you probably don't really, you know, yeah, you don't care about gel pens. Um, I used all sorts of ink. I used all sorts of nib sizes. I even used Pilot Parallel 6 millimeter size and a super juicy Waterman, the music nib one. And, like, just this thing is, in. yeah, just rubbing it in a little. Like, this is epic. Like, there was no bleed through. That's I mean, a... there is show through and... If you don't like show through, that might be a con for you. I did list that as a con because some people really hate that and would prefer that fountain pen friendly paper does not have this. But to me, I could deal with show through 
it's not that big a deal. Um, there is no feathering. Like, I took a loop to the page and I got like really close up. How and, close? Yes, Isa. Well, my loop is like a ten. No, fifteen. No, ten. Let me look. Ten. Ten x magnification. So I got pretty close. <laughs> and <laughs> I there's a picture. You can look at it. Like there is serious detail on there, and there are like very very few feathering lines. It's really good. With the naked eye, you're not going to see any feathering. And again, that was with the Waterman pen, which is really, really inky. So very, very decent drying times. You're not going to really see much. But and like, so just for clarification, are all the notebooks perforated or only the small one? Just the small one. Okay. Yeah. So, but they're all, they have line, blank, and grid. And yep. um, yes, so only the small one is perforated. All the pages are perforated, which is pretty cool. Now, when you were using it, um, th does it lay flat? It does. It does? It is so awesome. I mean, it's a pretty floppy notebook, which I personally like, like soft covers and stuff like this. So you can easily bend the spine, and it does this. I mean, this is pretty cool. Yeah, that's that is cool. cool. So it's not going to like smack you in the face and make you look uncool when you're trying to show off on campus with your sexy fountain pen and stuff. <laughs> I don't Does know this why. happen to you a lot? Because it sounds like a trauma there. Well, it could happen. I'm just saying, theoretically. But, I mean, overall, it's a really nice looking notebook. It's got like this, the silky red bookmark. Like the, the red is a nice touch. Back. I like the, the red thing, yeah. Yeah, and the pocket at the back, like the the thing in here is red. It's just really nice. I'm yeah. really impressed. They're really nice. The, the paper is excellent. Um, there is a sheen. You can see the sheen of the ink. I was really surprised about that. Yeah, your images show that off very well. Yeah. Um, and it, if you guys don't know what the, what sheen we're talking about, it's um, some paper, especially like um, Tomo River, mm -hmm. the ink won't necessarily be absorbed into the paper. It'll kind of sit on top and dry, and it'll leave this sheen that is just absolutely gorgeous and will add so much character to your writing that you just can't get any other way. Um, and so to find out that this paper has it, very, very cool. Yes, very. I mean, usually you find it with like ex really expensive paper, basically. And I was surprised. I was almost expecting to not find it. And then I looked at it and I was like, oh my god, there's a sheen. So, not a Charlie sheen, an ink sheen. Okay, sorry. I'm uh, ink sheen, she's don't go to rehab apart from that's pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, just ink tasters. So, and they're affordable. They are affordable notebooks. I believe the large nice. one is like fifteen ninety nine. Anyway, uh, all the prices are in the review. Yeah, they're you know it, they're not outrageous. They're, I mean, they no. compete with Rhodia and Clairefontaine. They're um, big notebooks. Like, there's yeah. a lot of pages in here. So the there's 120 sheets, 240 pages. Your the large one is is $16, the medium one is $13, and the small one is $11. Like that's a lot of paper. It it is a lot of paper, and it's yeah. really high quality paper. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if these will replace Rhodia for me and become my sole you know paper source, but I'll definitely be adding these to the lineup. I mean. I'll be I'll be purchasing these right next to Rodia, right next to Clairefontaine, you know, right next to Tomo River. I mean, they are high quality notebooks. I'm really, really excited that Twisby was able to come out with this high quality of a product on their first shot. Yeah, I'm I'm quite impressed. Um, someone has reported in the chat that it does feather with some inks. I mean, I used like 15 inks in here. There are of course like 800 inks out there, so. But you know, I've experienced feathering on Rodia too. So right. So it does depend on. Eventually, you might encounter an ink that will that will feather on the paper. But so far, the only paper I haven't experienced feathering on is Tomo River. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, Sorry, Stephen. I know that Tomo River is not your thing, but no, but that's all right. I mean, I have taste. Oh my God. <laughs> It's you come awesome. over here and say that to my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, let, let's, let, I, I'm only kidding. I mean, Tomoe Rift paper is, is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's super thin. It has a lot of things going for it. And, and as you say, it's, uh, there is nothing wrong with the quality. The only thing I don't like is that it is so thin. That's just personal preference. I mean, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Get out of here. All right. 
You're dead to me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, overall, though, I, I think it's a, a really nice notebook. So yeah. if you are looking to try something new or you're just looking to replace your notebook or you know something, I, I think you should give it a shot. Quite and nice. maybe it's uh, it's good to add. <clears throat> I don't want to advertise anyone, but I believe Cult Pens in the UK now sells this stuff, which is nice for people in Europe because with shipping costs, etc., it can be a bit costly to uh, yes. purchase from the US, isn't it? Thank you. Excellent. Yes. So stay tuned because then you could you can have a chance to win the medium and the small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm keeping the large. Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah. thanks to uh, Philip at Twisby, he sent those to us for review and to give away, so we, we definitely appreciate that. Yay. Yeah, so I hope you enjoy the first paper cut. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to more. Yeah, it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. All right, so do we have uh, some questions now? Uh, we have a, we had a very good question. Um, but I think we should save it because it's going to require a lot of time to answer. Uh, and I think it will be very useful to a lot of people. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah I agree. So maybe we should move on to our shout-out. Yes. Shout-out. Yeah, it's kind of special. Who wants to do it? Yeah, you should uh, do it. Yeah, you do it. Okay. Our shout-out today is to Brian Anderson from Ooh. Anderson Pens. Yay. Oh, there's, oh, I don't have the cheer thing set. Why are we shouting out to Brian Anderson? Because it's his birthday today. Oh, cool. Yeah, so if you're listening or you're in chat, maybe you can like go over to their Facebook page and wish him a happy birthday. Because yeah, he's been definitely. on here quite a few times and he's awesome and super helpful and just a great guy. And, and plus, he, he turned 25. I mean, that's a, that's a good age, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah. But hit him up on Twitter, Anderson Pins. Mm -hmm. um, W wish yeah. him happy birthday. I love it. Yeah, I bet. He, yeah, he would totally love it. So that'd be really cool. Be a cool peep. Or something. Uh, did we have some some news on the website this week? We we do have a bit of news. I yeah, think it's, I think it was like some quality news this week. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and as opposed to last week, or how was that? <laughs> no, I mean like like <laughs> exciting, like super exciting news. Well, go ahead. Does that make sense? Okay, so we had an FP Geeks update from our very own. No, shoot, there we go. From Dan. So if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. But now he's here, so it's kind of confusing. But you should still watch it because Ari is in it, and she's really cute. Yeah, I like how the week after I put that out, I'm on the <laughs> show and I'm trying to explain how I won't be on the show. Uh. Ari is just throwing you for a loop. She's just yeah. keeping you on your toes. But yeah, but no, it's not like I'm like just gonna be like done with the show forever. That's not what I was trying to say there. I was just you know, sometimes I'm not gonna be on, and it's gonna probably gonna happen more than when I will be on. But you know, I still will come back when I have time, just just like today. So. And it's more spontaneous, right? That's so right. Yeah. It depends and it's a on surprise. if she's. Uh, this is, yeah, exactly. So. Now we know, I mean, we know from psychological work that actually this invariable payoff scheme works best. Take gamblers, for example. So people will always be, oh, he's there today. Oh, yeah. And then people get all happy. So I, I think it's awesome. Isn't yeah. this like rewarding puppies with treats every now and then? Yes, exactly. exactly. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, also on the site, we had uh, a good deal on the Irushizuku inks. It's like $20 a bottle with free shipping. So, Aziza, I know you have every Orochizuku ink, yeah. but you didn't actually order more, did you? No, I didn't, because I also have oh. doubles of a whole bunch. So. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was like, uh, I'm, just still on, I'm still on pen and ink hiatus. Like, I haven't bought anything. That is just unreal. I know. So, are, aren't you proud of me? Like, God, uh, I'm doing so not good. Not really. We're kind of scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, uh, I did pick up four bottles. Oh, what'd you get? Um, I got one of the pinkish red ones, the Sujuki I think, or nice. I think it's that one. Um, I got another blue, another green, and I can't remember what the other one was. But uh, You'll have to, once you get them, you'll have to like write some stuff and show us. Definitely. I, I'm still a noob though. I've only got like seven bottles, so. And then these four I think will make 11, so. In total? Two. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. We need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you send me some of your doubles? <laughs> uh, moving along. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, we had an encyclopedia of uh, the Karandash Blue Sky, which I think was pretty. It's uh, it's a blue ink. 
<laughs> but it's a it's a nice blue ink though. Well, yeah. I mean, it's 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 like I um, it, I, I think it kind of fits in the role. I mean, almost every ink brand has a blue like that. So I mean, Waterman has its Florida oh. slash Serenité, and Mont Blanc has its royal blue. Pelican has its royal blue. Gandash has blue sky. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there's anything, but I mean that is their version of washable blue, and that's. You know, I, I, I've seen this a lot of times now, and I don't think there are a lot of differences between the different uh, blues, but it's definitely a nice blue if you're going to pick up one. And but it's only so gorgeous in the, in the triple swab with the Pilot Parallel. That's true. It is, it is a nice blue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, you should check it out, because, I mean, I thought it was pretty. So, anyway. And, and of course, what I think is what matters most. So. And that makes one of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, there was the Sailor Pro Color series, and this is the summer summer color. And I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna try this. Uchi Misu, translucent blue. Let's just go with that. It's a pretty color anyway. So there. Let's just go with that word. Um, we also had hands on with the Nakaya Piccolo Writer, oh Heki Tamanuri fountain pen by Dan. With beautiful pictures. Thank you. So Absolutely. if you need to like drool or like live vicariously through someone else for a bit, you can check that out. <laughs> it was fantastic, and really got to thank Lisa for for sending this pin in to me. She sent it in to have some nib work done, and then she said, "Well, why don't you hold on to it for a little bit and do a review if you want?" I was like, "Oh yeah," and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a sad day when I have to send this back. <laughs> when you have to part with it. Yeah. Yeah. But but I thought it was great. I mean, it was a wonderful review. So if you haven't seen that, yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, Anakia. It's it's. I always imagined having one in my collection at some point, but I've never seriously considered buying one until I just used this pen. And now my next big purchase will be Anakia. Like it's just like that's what it's gonna be. So it's like all right, I guess it's they gonna be. <laughs> are awesome. Yeah, they're pretty nice. I can't argue with that. So um, we also had this one was interesting because this one was kind of like a, a summary of things from the forum, which is why you should be on the forum if you're not, because you get like insider scoop. Um, di duh. See, I say diamine because it's kind of sciency. Diamine is to release new color, which is salamander, and also other fun things from the forum. So if you want to see what fun things are going on at the forum, you should check that out, and then you should check out the forum. Absolutely. Yes. And then the Twisby Notebook Review, which Yay. is what I did. Yay. You should check it out because there's pretty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody likes pictures. And also there was an episode of Ask the Professor where I had to like talk to that dude again, that crazy guy. That's cool. terrible. Are you yeah. enjoying that, Aziza? Well, I don't know. It's an experience because, I mean, <laughs> after the show, I just like have to like, like sit down and relax for like three hours because it's just so intense. This guy's a nut. He's just a nut job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I mean, I've interacted with him quite a bit. I know him fairly well, and he's uh, he, he's an interesting fellow. I can tell he's, you that. He's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, he's very entertaining, and he does answer questions. So there is that. There is that. So yeah, and that's that's what we got going on this week. So if you haven't seen it, you should have a look. Very and, cool. Yeah, and then there will be more stuff next week. Yeah. So, Steven, so Ziza, we know you haven't bought anything because you're on like, I don't know, there's something wrong with you right now. <laughs> but even, surely you've acquired something new this week. Uh, yes, I have acquired uh, one thing, uh, and that is Gerbin 1670, the um, yeah. Funky blue, or whatever they, they call it. It's their, um, their it's interesting like blue ocean, right? Yeah, blue ocean. That's the name. I can, uh, yeah. Um, so this is um, uh, one of the most annoying bottles I've, I've ever seen because oh, it has such a narrow neck that it's it's very hard. I, I don't think I don't even think one forty nine will fit in there physically. But still, um, it's an interesting ink, a dark blue. This is the next encyclopedia entry. So expect to see this Tuesday in the encyclopedia. And um, um, a, a dark blue. It's it's a nice blue. I like it. I've I've got some that's wonderful. It, but 
it's disappointing when you're coming from the red in that same series because yeah. you know, that, that red is just so unique and it has that metallic sheen mm -hmm. to it, you know, and like if they could have put some kind of silver sheen into this, like it would have oh, been epic. It would have. It oh totally my god, would have I would have like epic. bought so many bottles of that. Like really, unfortunately, it, it isn't. It's no, it's not, and it's really disappointing. Like, but it's yeah, just, it's a dark blue. I haven't used it that much yet, but it's it is it is a dark blue. It's, it's a nice dark blue, yeah. but it is just a dark blue. There's nothing spectacularly fancy. About it. Yeah, yeah. So nothing for me. What about you, Dan? Anything new? Nope. I uh, just got that ink ordered. Um, no, no new pens though. Ho hoping to get something new soon. Oh. Uh, need to get something picked out for Arya. Trying to figure out what her first pen is going to be. Yeah, that's going to oh, be... I'm, uh, I, I, I've just prepared a, a parcel for Arya, uh, which is uh, going to be sent very soon, and it may just include the first pen, so don't worry about that too much. Alright. Oh, she's so happy. Yeah, she just got done eating. Dang. What a cutie. She's like, you 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 crazy to talk about pens again? Yes. <laughs> Y'all is crazy. She really does seem to get bigger every week. Oh yeah. Well, they do grow, Stephen. Growing like a weed. Uh, yeah, I've noticed. Too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at you. <laughs> so cute. Okay, so while we look at how cute Arya is, I will tell people how you can contact us. Um, on the web, fegeeks.com. You can email podcast at fegeeks.com. You can phone 415-685-GEEK, 415-685-4335. You can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash fpgeeks, and facebook.com slash fpgeeks. You can hang out on the forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum, which you really should because it's really cool and there's lots of neat stuff going on there. Um, use the post, Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 728, Ankeny, Iowa, 50021. Yo, yo. <laughs> Sorry. And don't forget to wish Brian happy birthday. Yes. If you haven't yet. So, And thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time. So and listening. If you're listening. Sorry. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye, Arya. <laughs>